For years, the government has insisted that the increase in whale deaths off the East Coast has no relationship to the wind industry's high decibel pile driving and boat activity. But now, according to friend of the show Michael Schellenberger, a new documentary will challenge that notion. Here's a clip of Thrown to the Wind, a public production. There aren't many places where the North Atlantic right whale can go. It's destined to extinction. It sounds like they're like on some pile drive. What the United States is looking at is thousands of wind turbines in an area that our whales, our dolphins, our marine life, where they live, where they migrate, where they breed. It's only when they start it going into the wind lease areas that we believe that the whales are dying. So those red dots are whale deaths. Precisely. What a scandal. Here to delve more into this issue is investigative journalist Michael Schellenberger, who helped research and produce this documentary that is being released today. Welcome, Michael. Thanks for having me. So what is the argument, the causal argument, that between um, whale deaths and the uh, introduction of these wind turbines? Sure. There's basically two mechanisms that we think are causing the whale deaths. The first is there's boat traffic in areas where there has not historically been boat traffic. And we know that whales tend to be, they tend to hide from the boats. They know that they're a threat and they avoid them. And so when you add new boat traffic to areas that had been uh, previously untrafficked, uh, you're going to get more boat strikes, which are um, one of the most, one of the leading causes of death, if not the leading cause of death. The second mechanism is that loud noise that you hear, which is uh, sonar mapping of the ocean floor, eventually will be pile driving uh, to build those uh, wind turbines. Those uh, the whales run away from those sounds. They're frightened of those sounds. Uh, we know that uh, mothers and their calves can uh, split apart and go into uh, feeding less uh, uh, places where there's not as many fish for feeding. Um, they can also make them tired to run away from that and it also can push them into areas where there's a lot of boat traffic. So there's two very well known mechanisms for how these activities would cause uh, deaths and the government has been saying that they've been researching this and we have uh, shown that they have not either they've not been researching it or they have been researching it and discovered what we discovered which means they've been covering it up um, uh, either of which is a scandal because th they've been reassuring the public that they've been looking into this we go out on the first boat trip out with an acoustic specialist and he drops the hydrophone which is the uh, underwater microphone into the water and they discover these unbelievably loud uh, levels, uh, high decibel uh, sounds for sonar tracking. So this is, I think it's a major environmental scandal. I think it's the biggest environmental scandal I've ever worked on in 30 years of environmental advocacy. Uh, we are already talking to members of Congress about hearings on this. We need subpoena powers. I believe that both NOAA and BOEM, the two main federal organizations that are responsible for protecting these amazing mammals, of which there's only 340 individuals left, that these agencies have violated their public trust. Uh, they have uh, not done what they're supposed to be doing. And I don't trust them. And I don't think members of Congress should trust them. I think the public should not trust them. We need a proper investigation to get to the bottom of what's going on. Can you tell us more about how the wind energy industry and the, the oversight, the, go the governmental institutions have responded to the claims you make uh, in this uh, documentary? Uh, they have not responded. They have not responded yet. Uh, we are uh, going to take our findings to them with members of Congress because I absolutely do not trust these agencies. We talked to scientists in these agencies who have been raising the alarm. I should point out that last year, a senior scientist with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which is called NOAA, sent a letter warning that there could be population-wide effects on the North Atlantic right whale, um, and by which he meant extinction. Um, he was ignored and overruled by his superiors who are jamming this project forward. Similarly, all of the major environmental groups sent a letter two years ago raising the exact same concerns and they were overridden by their bosses who are dead set on having these huge industrial wind projects um, off the eastern shore. So um, we uh, are going to go to them with our data. We have two sets of data. It's the acoustics data and it's also the boat data, uh, which shows this correlation with the wind deaths. But we're going to do it with members of Congress because these, um, in my view, these federal agencies are sources of disinformation 
and I'm using that very strong word deliberately here. I believe that they're deliberately misleading the public about the risk to these whales. They've overridden what their own scientists have been saying. I frankly think this is a shameful, ex um, sh shameful experience. Um, I'm personally, as you can tell, quite outraged by it. I think anybody that cares about these magnificent animals, of which there's only 340 left, uh, should be very concerned about what we document in this film. It seems that, on average, um, about 25 whales are beached on the East Coast per year. And what is notable here is that there's been an increase in this past year. It went up to 60 whales, if I understand what the, the data here. And the allegation is that these wind turbine, the question of these wind turbines has is the correlation here. Um, but my understanding is also that the wind turbines started to be uh, constructed back in 2016, and the spike has only come about this year. So is there any explanation for why there seems to be a gap between the construction of these and the existence of the wind turbines and the, the spike this year, which does seem to be notable from years past? We actually, in the research we show, and it's in the documentary film, we show that there has been an increase and a strong correlation to those periods of wind industry activity going back to 2017. Um, as you noted, there's been 60 uh, whale recorded whale deaths, I should say, since December of last year. So, so obviously the year's not uh, is up yet. So that's um, over 60 this year. Where they call it an unusual mortality event. Um, they raise all sorts of issues. Um, you know, these things are always multifactorial. But I think the important thing to remember is that when you have so few individuals in a species remaining, um, 340, and I think one of the arguments, and I think honestly, this is uh, one of the subtexts that nobody wants to say, is I think that there are some people that have given up on the species. They think it's inevitably going to go extinct. We don't think so. We think it can come back. But that means that you can have no more impacts. So sometimes people say, Hey, maybe climate change, the warming waters is moving the whales into new fishing, into new hunting grounds. That could be the case. Uh, people might say um, there's other factors. There's been fishing, um, other boat activity. A absolutely. But that's all the more reason that you would not want to add all this additional boat activity and all of this very high decibel sonar activity because it's adding additional stressors. This is not very complicated science at a certain level. When you get what they call cumulative impacts on a very critically endangered, vulnerable population like this, you very well, very well may end up with extinction. But I'm very confident in this data. We actually have a second research project that's ongoing that correlates this. Honestly, it's it's outrageous that we've seen that we are able to, that we as kind of uh, amateur researchers, uh, we've got an amazing team, but nonetheless, it's kind of shocking that it had to be turned to citizen scientists and citizen journalists to track this when it's really been the responsibility. And there's been millions of dollars spent on supposedly trying to study whether or not there's a correlation here. But Michael, that, isn't that, I'm sorry, but isn't that part of the issue? If, if there's multifactorial causes here, and one of them, one of the main leading causes of whale death is global warming, particularly with Ar Arctic spe uh, uh, species that are more affected by these kinds of things. And wind turbines are geared toward addressing exactly that problem, getting us off of the fossil fuels that are causing global warming in the first place. How do you reconcile the obvious broad national global interest in moving away from fossil fuels, including for the sake of animals, but also for human beings, um, against the, uh, the impact that they may or may not be having on this particular population of whales? Well, I mean, the first thing is to say that we see a very strong correlation between the industrial wind activity and these whale deaths. So there is definitely a baseline of harm against these whales. There's no doubt about it. That's an argument for no additional harm against the whales, no additional what they call incidental harassments or takes of these whales. Um, on, the other, on the issue of climate change, the obvious solution is to do what we've been doing over the last 10, 15 years, which is switching from coal to natural gas and also doing nuclear. It's worth pointing out that the amount of electricity that they expect to get from these industrialized wind farms is less than from a single nuclear power plant. And um, thanks in part to Representative Ocasio-Cortez and others, they shut down Indian Point nuclear plant in New York a couple of years ago. They replaced it one-to-one -one with natural gas. Massachusetts shut down a nuclear power plant. So if you um, so I don't think as an environmentalist and a conservationist, I don't think we should have to choose between these two worthy goals. I don't think that 
as a part of dealing with climate change, we should accept the extinction of a whale species. I think that's by that's by definition having lost the plot. But Michael, part of the re the rationale, however you felt about it, of shutting down the um, nuclear power plant in AOC's district was that the waste from that nuclear plant was going into the water supply and having an adverse effect on, on among other things, marine life. So again, if you discovered that nuclear power plants were similarly having an effect on whales, is that, a, is that an argument for now shutting down nuclear power plants? I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure well, out where this, where this ends logically. Yeah, I mean, for, certainly all energy uh, production has side effects, but uh, nuclear waste going into the water is not one of them. That was definitely not happening at Indian Point or any other nuclear it's, plant. It's not that it's nuclear waste. Level. It's that it's that runoff, uh, the warm water that they use to cool the plants, generally speaking, is discharged, causing algae blooms and the oxygen level of the water to increase significantly in a way that throws off the entire ecosystem. Yeah, that I mean, that does that is not that is not what happened. Um, it did not have anything like ecosystem effects um, of what you're describing in many nuclear plants around the world. The very slightly warmer water that comes out of the plant attracts marine life. It actually attracts manatees in Florida. It actually attracts sea lions and seals in California. But in any event, that that's slightly warmer water is very easy to mitigate is by no means reason to shut down those plants. Um, it is not toxic at all, um, and if and I the algae blooms. My understanding is that for the most part, those algae blooms have been a result of lack of, of proper sewage treatment, uh, not the nuclear power plant. So I agree, there's trade offs, but in this case, I think it's a pretty, um, uh, from an environmental point of view, a pretty easy decision uh, to to keep your nuclear plants operating. Last question for you. So I I'm probably coming at this from a different uh, angle than Brianna. I. I would like to protect um, endangered species, endangered species of whales. I, I'm probably willing to do that up to a point. Um, obviously, Earth has had a lot of species, right, that no longer exist, that went the way of the dinosaur for reasons that have nothing to do, sometimes nothing to do with human involvement. Um, I don't know. I, I certainly wouldn't agree that, like, a certain state of the way things were on the planet should be conserved no matter the cost like on a philosophical level, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't support that. I, I, I want to protect the species to the extent it's possible and is not an inordinate waste of our own resources. But past a certain point, I would be okay with it. So, you know, what is, I guess, from a from a big picture standpoint, what is the argument that we should, um, um, you know, handicap our our ability to use different energy sources or cleaner energy sources or cheaper energy sources? Out of, out of a concern for you know what is a couple hundred members of a of a of a species, not a species I I want to suffer or I want gotten rid of, but there's there's reasonable and then there's does it go past a point where it's like, okay, you're a panda, you're not breeding, we can only do so much. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think there's um, definitely been an argument within the environmental movement over whether or not these species are priceless and really. Uh, no price is too high in order to conserve them. There's other people that try to do a cost-benefit analysis. But I think it's important to remember, Robbie, that in this case, the cost of these industrialized wind projects is being supported by the American taxpayer. We're paying around a third of the cost of subsidizing these industrial wind turbines. Uh, they are not, you, they are not uh, financially viable to be built without the subsidy. As Warren Buffett famously said, that's the whole point is to get the subsidy. So without uh, subsidies, there would be no industrial wind farm. Without basically them uh, uh, repressing the best available science, they would not be able to build this project. But, and you're right, I mean, there's definitely some background uh, extinction of species. I myself have criticized the idea that we're in a mass extinction, we're not. At the same time, I think that most people have an emotional reaction to these whales because they are such magnificent, ancient, large mammals. They have behaviors that we I think find very uh, sympathetic and uh, are marvels to see. I don't think I can make a rational argument actually for saving whales. I just think, Robbie, you and I will just have to go out in the water and look at some of them. And usually that 
uh, has enough of an impact to get people to want to save them. Well, it's also worth noting, we should just say um, that the stated rationale, uh, there was a, a negotiated decommissioning of the Indian Point plant that they agreed to. The nuclear, the concerns specifically were the placement of the plant next to um, so much a densely populated area. Specifically, there had been alarming incident after another, one after another, including missing and damaged bolts on the structures in both reactors that surround and are critical to cooling nuclear fuel. A May 2015 transformer fire sent thousands of gallons of oil into the Hudson River. Radioactive spills and releases into the Hudson River and groundwater failed accident drills and ad inadequate disaster planning. The fact that it w the unit was in, uh, within a mile of a significant seismic zone was also uh, one of the reasons that led to decommissioning that plant while another plant was open. So I'm not in no way against nuclear power, but there were specific public health and environmental reasons that that plant was shut down. And I think that people are going to have to reconcile whether or not the cost benefit of various forms of new energy are worth it. The whales could be infected by a lot of these different kinds of things. So thank you so much for bringing this story to us, Michael. Thanks for having me, guys. More Rising after this.